Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Rob from Bristol Water and I'm here with the lovely Michelle from City to Sea. Hello. So we're just leading up to the Backwell Festival which is on from the 6th to the 8th of July in Backwell and we as Bristol Water will be there with our water bar giving out free water and doing our very best to reduce the plastic pollution that's created from the festival. So um, welcome Michelle. Hello Rob. Good How are you see. doing? I'm alright, thanks you. Good, good. Yeah, I'm alright. I'm alright. It's a lovely sunny day so that's always nice. Beautiful. So she's got a few questions. Nice Alrighty. and simple for you. Nothing okay. too, nothing too testing but just like to know your thoughts what your where your head's at is where city to see you're at what, what, what you're working on next and stuff so my first question mm -hmm. is, is is around using plastic to raise awareness of plastic pollution so when I first met you a few years ago there was quite a lot of campaigns awareness campaigns that use plastic bottles maybe so to, to draw, aware, draw awareness where do you think we are with that How, what's your opinion on people still doing that and where do you think we should be going next with it so it probably would have been like the Bristol Wells in Millennium Square, yes. for example, yes, exactly. which are still sat out on the Avon, yes. uh, wherever they are. So I think, personally, I mean this is obviously a personal opinion, it was brilliant, it's been brilliant, they've, they've had so many different massive art pieces, the Bristol Well being one of them, <laughs> Sky Ocean Rescue have got another piece, and they've done a lot to raise awareness of plastic pollution. But now, I think we're in a position where it's not to be using plastics as their art material because it gives people that kind of feeling of, well, it's all right because you can make art out of it. Mm. It's okay, I can drink a bottle, but then you can make art out of it. Mm. And it's not necessarily championing the solutions. So what we really love to see is artwork made out of solutions and showing people solutions and how beautiful the solutions are rather than looking at the rubbish side of things. So um, we've got the, the Bristol Water Bar, which is going to Backwell Festival as well. When I came to you earlier this year, I, we talked about using uh, plastic bottles to create this big plastic cube, like curtain thing, to really sort of draw attention to everything. What, you kind of, yeah, told me, told me your opinions at the time. So what do you think of things like that? <laughs> well, I guess that was another sort of example of using plastic as an artwork and I could understand obviously like I said at the time I understand why you thought it was a good idea but is it again it's giving that place for single-use plastic I'm not saying all plastic is bad but it's giving that single-use plastic mm. a place and that kind of oh but look at it it's beautiful it's the same sort of thing and so you, what you've done is incredible and you've showed a utopia of place without plastic mm, that which is it. yeah and that was it and there's so your lead in the way on that which is really brilliant Bristol Water. It's a really interesting point though they say in there is that actually giving single-use plastic its place is kind of where we're trying to move away from this place because lots of plastic is good like some of it is good there's amazing things in the medical world we have to use it in the water industry obviously to make the pipes to get you clean water but yeah that's an interesting point and getting rid of the place for single-use ones stuff that don't, we don't need yeah it's the single use that's really polluting the oceans it's that bosh 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 i mean they say that a plastic bag is used for an average of 15 minutes well right. a bottle of water can be used even quicker than that if it's not refilled mm. so like you plug and it's gone so it's that concentrating on those single-use plastics first before we sort of start thinking about other plastics because like you say there's a lot of good things we couldn't be doing and yeah. i'm not prepared to yeah, go yeah. and live in a cave without wi-fi <laughs> are you no, no, not really, not, to be honest. Um, not at all. So how long have you been interested, if you like, in plastic pollution or campaigning for people to uh, for the reduction of plastic pollution? Ten years. Wow. So I first learned about plastic pollution in 2008. Mm -hmm. And I learned about it firsthand because I used to live on the west coast of Portugal. Right. And so I went to do a beach clean and a deserted beach where there was people hadn't left any rubbish, everything had washed in from the Atlantic. Okay. Wow. And and we carried it up this massive hill and we took it all away and I thought that was our good deed for the day mm. and I was always an avid recycler anyway long before it was trendy to do so and so we such put it all oh, oh, such a trendsetter <laughs> <laughs> we used to wash up more plastic than mm. we did washing up so I used to buy that much plastic right wow yeah Interesting. so um so anyway that particular day we took it all back put it in the recycling bin and we thought that was it job done but then I picked up a copy of the surface path and it simply said every piece of plastic ever made still exists mm. and much of it is in our oceans wow. yeah. and I was like whoa this was news to me and then there was a, a video to a uh, to a towel of entanglement and it's a horrible horrendous video of animals entangled and dying in our plastics and I was living in a camper van at the time in the summer and I think <laughs> we used to move out the house rent the house live in the camper van and I think because I was faced with my plastic. I was in such a small space, mm. I could see all the plastic I used. And I was just sitting there crying, just looking at these animals dying, and that was it. 
I was like, no more, no more recycling for me. And for the next day on, I started to refuse single-use plastic. Wow. There's an interesting thing in there, yeah, that every piece of plastic ever made still exists. Yeah. Now, I'm not a scientist. Yeah, yeah. And I, don't, I haven't explored every bit of the ocean. Yeah, yeah. So I see, you know, some people might say, well, that's not true. It's like, okay, but what... you can I, burn stuff. You can burn that's, stuff, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. kind of gone then into the land of incineration. Yeah. But I was a... I'm a photographer, and I was shooting surf schools, and literally plastic washed around my feet every single day. We did beach cleans, we puffed off lo so much plastic off the beaches constantly. So whether that fact is true or not, I didn't need to worry about that. I saw what was coming up and I saw what was in my own house. So, so you say you got into it, what, 10 years ago was when you first came aware of when you were living in Portugal. Now, we've not all had the amazing opportunity to live in Portugal, so how a lot of people have come aware of plastic pollution is through Blue Planet 2, which yes. went out last year? Yep, last I think it was, year. Yep, November so, December. As someone who had been aware of plastic pollution, campaigning against plastic pollution for a while, how did you feel when you, you saw those, those episodes of Blue Planet TV? I mean, there already was a bubbling of awareness, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, City to Sea, we were founded in 2015. We've already had our Switch the Stick campaign, and there already was a lot of awareness, but I guess only if you were in that bubble, whereas Blue Planet just put it out there and it's incredible so since Blue Planet 2 the press on plastic pollution has just gone mad and it's where it needs to be in the press all the time I've got my mum going oh it's on the radio oh it's on the telly <laughs> it's getting into sort of mainstream yeah, and yeah. people hear about yeah. it because of Blue Planet 2 and we have I do believe Sir David Attenborough to thank for that <laughs> and Plastic Oceans the film was already out yeah. and David Attenborough was on that film and that's on Netflix as well so people can okay. watch that but obviously it wasn't going into people's homes in the same way as Blue Planet did. Yeah. But, but it can be now. Okay. That's great stuff. And so what do you think then we need to be doing next as a society, as, as the UK? What do you think we should is be our next steps? We have to keep going. Right. Yeah, we have to keep going. We have to, I think, realise our individual actions add up. Mm -hmm. I think that can be a hard one at times because you just think, well, what difference do I make? Yeah. So I think we do need to keep doing that and we do need to keep putting pressure on the governments. We've got our switch, um, our plastic tax petition, right. plastic levy petition. It's got 240,000 signatures on it so far. Okay. And that is a 5P, a light plastic bag. Yeah. So your coffee cup lids, straws, cups, polystyrene. So that would be a point of sale charge. Okay. A a, a levy so some people are like well you should charge the retailers and don't put it on to the yeah. consumer but if the price goes on to the retailers all the retailers are going to do is inf inflate their prices to swallow it mm -hmm. whereas if it goes on to the consumer people have got that thing of like oh no I don't need it it's 5p yeah. but it's also that reminder yeah, yeah. it's not just the 5p it's that reminder it's that okay yeah. it's because of Sir David it's do the, it do it for Dave it's the, con <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the lifestyle changes I suppose yeah. it's like the slight changes you can make which make actually Quite a, big, mm -hmm. quite a big difference. But that levy going on will put that conversation out there again. So what sort of traction are you getting from government in any way? Or are they listening? They, well, they talk about it. Mm -hmm. So now we need to see action. Yeah. Action. That's what we need to see. Good stuff. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Rob, thanks, for all you're, you're for doing at down. Bristol Water. How many bottles is it you're wanting to prevent this year? A lot. Go on. Tens of thousands. 80,000. It is 80,000 we're trying for, yeah. 80,000. It's, it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of bottles and hopefully we'll get somewhere close. But it's, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but it's doable, isn't it? Yeah. So I think when you realise just how many refills you're well, doing. What was great to see is Festival of Nature <laughs> is a good example. Because um, we've been there a few years. And this year you certainly, people didn't expect to be given something to fill. They didn't really expect to be given a cup or anything. Everybody had something to, to refill. Um, and it was the same at Pride last year. Lot, lots of people bringing along their own bottles anyway. So it was starting to become that part of a habit. And you can see that having worked on the water bar for three years. You can see that, that difference. And actually, because we've always concentrated on Bristol, when we go outside of Bristol now, you can see that they're, they're, they quite, don't quite get it just yet. But then you're starting to see that sort of progress that over the years that they actually are bringing along bottles, which wasn't happening. Which is amazing. Which is and obviously refills started in Bristol. It did. Refill. And refills started in Bristol. And now we have over 10,000 refill stations across the whole country. Yeah, yeah. And we're going into certain other places, shall we say. Yeah. So we, you know, 
that's and I think oh, those awarenesses and those bits of press that we've had about that will also feed back into the water bars and people mm. will be yeah, yeah, expecting it's, water. So you expect yeah, and the water bars growing. Is, we've seen Thames Water created one for the Chelsea Flower Show a few weeks ago, which was amazing to see. You know, and all the other water companies are starting to pick up on the idea. Um, and so uh, yeah, hopefully build their own as well. So, so you could prevent eighty thousand one summer. And yeah. then together. Well, if you've got the bit, you know, the bigger areas and stuff, getting on board as well. I know London's quite. Um, you know, they've obviously got their own refill campaign as well. So hopefully, we start seeing bigger numbers. Yeah. Bigger numbers, preventing plastic pollution at source. Yes. Solutions. Doing it. Solutions. Good stuff. Cool. <laughs> All right. Cheers, Rob. Cheers.